What, am I doing all the work? Yeah. I can. Yeah. Now listen, is there a rhyme or reason here? Well, I don't know how many we're going to be able to fit in the trailer to begin with. So let's see if we can get four and four. Yeah, we'll try it. I mean, those blocks are pretty heavy. You're doing a good oh, job. Oh, it though. ain't no thing but a chicken wing. I think I'll just watch. Yeah, you're cute. No, we can't fit four. Well, three. So I we've can, got I about. I'll carry one on my lap. This so is cool. Sorry. Is it cool? What's cool? Well, it's just cool that our house is so in the middle of nowhere that we have to like hand take the blocks down there like this i just think it's yeah. i like that so we've got about 200 blocks to, that we have to take to go down the trail and cross the creek there's just no way of getting anything this heavy down there because i want to say like one pallet is like 3500 pounds can they crack easily? so that's a lot of weight yeah they can they can crack it's just concrete so yeah it can't be there's just really no great way of it i think i can do two things can't i Probably. Just doing it easy. If they fall off, it's not on me. Sure. It's not on you. Seriously. Anybody else notice I'm still can't videotaping? <laughs> yeah, what the heck? <laughs> what the heck? I'm letting her get her her experience of helping him. Yeah. Well dad gum, somebody's gotta watch the kids. I I like being down here doing this. Yeah, it is fun. It is. It feels yeah. good. Chase and asked what all this was, and we started singing the foolish man built his house on the sand yeah. again, so I could explain to him again about the rocks and why we're doing it. Yep. So that was cool. So I figured right here is a great place to take a little break and talk about our foundation and why we chose the type of foundation and, and why we went with the blocks. But don't worry, we're gonna finish up the foundation part two as soon as I'm done. The one thing you always have to consider whenever you are building a house or a cabin is your location. Our location was a big factor for us. What type of material could we get in there? We could not get concrete trucks in there. So that kind of had to rule out as far as, let's say going for a slab, or a poured wall crawl space type foundation that you see a lot of houses that are built on today. Let's talk about slabs really quickly. What I don't like about slabs, if you're considering a slab, is once it's done, there's no correcting it. Once a slab is in, there's no fixing anything. You can't get under there, like if, let's say for plumbing, let's say you have some sort of a leak or something happens in the plumbing. There is no like crawling under your house and fixing a leak. Now, hopefully your plumber will do everything right the first time, but what if he doesn't? The other thing is that what I don't like about slabs is that the floor is always cold. So unless you put some type of flooring down on top of that, then you're going to be walking on a cold concrete floor all the time. Now, let's talk about the option number two is a pier and beam foundation. Now, I see a lot of people going with this on tiny houses and small cabins that are in remote locations. But what I don't like about those is how it's exposed, how everything is open underneath. Down here in Missouri, we have a lot of skunks, possums, armadillos, just critters that crawl around and they typically do it at nighttime. And what they like to do is they like to crawl underneath your house and they like to burrow. Or I've even heard of dogs chasing skunks underneath your house and a, and a skunk spraying and then your whole house stinks. So I don't like those for that reason. You can, I'm assuming, cover up the exterior part of it but I see a lot of people where it's completely exposed. Now, the other thing about that is you have to think about it being exposed during the cold winter months. And also when it's windy, you're gonna be having air blowing through that constantly. So how are you going to protect your pipes? How are you gonna protect them from freezing whenever the cold weather comes? So there's things about the pier and beam foundation where your hole underneath of your house is exposed that I don't like for those reasons. So whenever, came time for us choosing what type of foundation we wanted, I knew right off the bat I want something enclosed. And so because of a concrete truck is out of the question for us getting one down there, the option for us was these concrete blocks. We had to take them down there. We had to stack them. We had to mortar the joints. We had to cut rebar. Uh, we had to mix cement to place on the corners of each one of these blocks. Now it does take work, but for us that was the best option for us. Now let's talk cost. So I just figured it up, everything that it cost us, materials and labor for our foundation, and it was only $2,800. That's everything. So for me, I feel like that is a very, very affordable foundation. I don't have any comparison on what that would be if, say, you did any of the other options that I mentioned. I have no idea. 
But for us, 2,800 bucks, I'm very happy with that. We're staying on budget by going that route. And so those are other things you need to consider is your budget as well, is what can you afford to do? If you can only afford a pier and beam foundation, I do believe those probably would be a cheaper option. It's gonna require less material. But again, you gotta think about the weather and animals crawling up underneath there. So I hope that information helps you guys whenever you're making the decision on what type of foundation you should go with on your tiny house or cabin. So now let's continue with the rest of the vlog. Yeah, you gotta put it in neutral. There you go, hit the button. Click up one. I know how to drive well, a daggum four-wheeler. You just don't know how to start them. Yeah. Just go slow. Go down a gear. It's already in first. Hang on. I'll sit on here. Okay. Uh, all right, back up. Get all the way back a little bit more. Okay, let me get, I'm gonna sit on the back with you. Put some weight on the rear end. And now, put it first, just don't, don't, yeah, just put it first and go. to take some off. Okay. So it's just too heavy. So what do you gonna do? Nothing, just hang on. Alright, I took four off. Alright, hang on. We'll put those four back on. This time we did six, and then we'll put two in the back and put my weight on the rear, and then I'll sit back here too. Sit next to you, baby. Alright. No, it's not your fault. I don't know what tire it was. To get it. Oh yeah. Ah. That one. It's kaput. It wasn't your fault. It's just our situation. I had a flat tire on this one the other day. On the four wheeler? On the four wheeler. Had to fix it. Yeah, but how in the heck are we gonna that's not a fixable tire? No, it's not. Alright, so let's So I gotta unload this and we'll have to just take the trailer off. We're just gonna have to use the four wheeler now. All right. Well, it's too dark now. We got uh, three of the pallets, three of the four unloaded up here. I wish I could show you, but you won't be able to see them. <laughs> anyway, headed home and get some dinner.
Well, we tried to make a little bit of a better path here to see if Dad can make it down on the tractor. This tractor's only two-wheel drive, so that's our biggest concern is him not getting out. And at one point, the road was a little worse than where we were afraid he was going to slide off this way, but we kind of built it. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. Sorry. I was doing hand gestures and he thought I was talking to him. <laughs> block. This is it. This is the last one. I'm going to Just about. <sighs> you want to do this? <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> Unless you want to hold the camera. I can hold the camera. I figured you might want to lay this last block. Like a glove. <laughs> Glad to see that baby in there. Yeah. Hey guys, thanks for watching today's video. We are gonna end this a little bit differently than any other video we've ever done before. And it's because of our topic uh, of being a solid foundation. Because when Blaine and I think of a solid foundation, we can't help but think of our solid foundation in Jesus Christ. And so with everything that's going on in the world today, with so much fear and uncertainty, we felt like we needed to end this video with a little bit of hope and encouragement and inspiration. What I want to do is I want to read you a Bible verse. Uh, it is Matthew 7, 24, 27. Actually, do you want to read it? Yeah. Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the flood waters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the wind beats against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. And guys, I was singing that silly little song to the kids as we were building the foundation before any of this craziness happened, you know, talking about how the wise man built his house upon a rock. But it's so true, and, and our foundation is in the Lord, and um, that's why we, we don't have to fear. We don't have to fear. And we just want to encourage you guys to seek out the Lord during this time and, mm -hmm. um, and reach out to us. Our greatest joy 
is to share Jesus. That's our greatest joy. It's our mission. And that's our mission, and that's why I believe God has um, opened these doors for us to have this influence because we desire to touch more lives. Absolutely. So anyway, guys, thanks again for watching this video. We hope that our words of encouragement have encouraged you and inspired you to let go of any fear, any doubts. Like Lane said, feel free to reach out to us. We would love to help you and, and pray for you, whatever it may be. And we are praying for all of you. We know several of our friends are struggling major. Either you've been hit by this virus or your job income has been affected and just know that we as a family as lpo6 we are praying for you we absolutely. mean it we don't just say it we're praying for absolutely. you absolutely absolutely we love you all so much have a wonderful day and god bless you bye guys Hi.